How is everyone doing out there? It is Jeff Black, me, and as always, Brandon and Cruz. Buddy, you got like, do you have like a little like, are you, you just look so trimmed up today. It's, it's really get a haircut for the holiday, my man. I I bet you look good in your family photos. Did you wear like a beautiful sweater vest and shit in them? I did not wear a sweater vest, to be honest with you. It was actually warm in Jersey. What's interesting, it was warmer last week. However, it is snowing right now. So we go back from like, maybe for me, warm is 55 degrees. And now we're at 32 degrees. So uh, it it fluctuates quite uh, heavily in the, in the Northeast, at least. Well, fair. Well, we are chasing clarity. I'm sorry to forget to put that chase clarity health and fitness podcast just brandon struck me as smiling beautiful like usual it's like i have to note this for the listeners who might not be watching at home to let you know brandon's still looking on point he's still looking on point but um how was your last seven days be we had the thanksgiving holiday how has it how was it what did you do did you uh did you track your food and and post it all over social media and let everyone know that you're just doing awesome out there in the world and kudos to you and all that shit I did not, my friend. Uh, I actually, I was so distracted with family being here that uh, I don't think I posted at all. I think I might have posted just like our setup, but that was that was about it, man. I, I put my phone away and I was just really trying to be yeah. intentional in the moment, kind of of, of what I spoke about in last week's episode in the intro that I was just telling people really like be where your feet are. That's a reminder that I give to myself, but I really try to be intentional, especially when I do have people that I care about and I love in my vicinity. And I have the ability to engage with them and and speak with them and really um, have, you know, cement memories. So uh, all, all in all, man, it's been a great week on my end. Um, This past week, my aunt and uncle flew in from Florida to celebrate the uh, Thanksgiving holiday with myself and my mother. And it was honestly, I got to tell you, I told you this uh, privately, but it was one of the best holidays we've we've ever had, honestly. And um, I'm really thankful for that and really grateful that they came out and that they made the occasion really special because it did lift my mom's spirit. She's obviously been in a bad place, uh, both physically and then also there's a a mental downside to uh, to illness that comes along with that. So uh, everything else is, you know. Uh, really going well. You know, Thanksgiving is always a holiday that I've personally looked forward to. Uh, I'm someone that I really do like the holidays. And uh, I do, you know, I, I really do enjoy this holiday, but much more than just the food. I think a lot of times, like I'll even speak with clients about this, like everyone's so food focused, especially around Thanksgiving, uh, which is something that my international clients can't get because it's not a part of their culture. Yeah. And so uh, it's really interesting because yeah, there's there's great food involved. Don't get me wrong, but that's never been my center for, like my centerpiece. Um, but really I enjoy this holiday because of the actual intentionality or the intention behind it, which is, you know, it essentially provides me an opportunity to reflect back and think of all the things that I really am thankful and grateful grateful for it. And my, I come from religious household. So we, uh, we do a lot of praying at this, uh, this time of year and during this occasion. And we really do try to think about things that we're thankful to God for. So it's always a, a good way to reflect back and really be, um, retrospective, but also reflective and, and really grateful. And, um, another thing I think that makes these holidays a little bit different for me is, um, up until two years ago. So last year was actually the first holiday that I really got to celebrate Thanksgiving in over a decade. Um, because prior to that, I barely had the opportunity to celebrate Thanksgiving because when I was working in the supplement industry, which a lot of people don't realize like all that encompasses, uh, when you really think about it, think about what comes right after Thanksgiving. It's Black Friday. Well, Black Friday was one of our biggest sales events of the year. So I would essentially, I would go to like Thanksgiving dinner and immediately go right into work because that whole night we would be um, anticipating and getting ready in terms of stocking and, and all of them for the next day to launch our Black Friday sales. And so I would work through the night of Thanksgiving and then into that full weekend. And, um, you know, although I still did work through the holiday, you know, in terms of my own business within coaching and things, it's such a different um, process essentially. So I find it so much more enjoyable now to look back because I have this comparative analysis where I'm able to say, all right, well, I'm working through a holiday weekend, but this is for my business. This is for the clients that I love to work with. It isn't like a forced effort where it's like, you know, when you're on a salaried position, your work, it doesn't matter if you worked 40 weeks, 40 hours that week, or you worked 85 hours that week, like you're getting paid the same amount. And it's not all about money, but it's also about like the feeling of gratitude and, and the feeling of fulfillment within that venture. Um, True. And so it was just all in all a really good holiday. But another thing I, I do want to touch on is, you know, obviously we're in, we're in the thick of it for for the holiday season. And so, you know, not only is that uh, challenging from a nutritional perspective, but I also this also um, sheds light on the fact that the new year is coming up. So we're you know thirty something days out from from twenty twenty four, which is is crazy to even say because I feel like we just got into twenty twenty three. However, 
you know, as the new year approaches, you know, I've been getting, and I'm sure you could say the same, I've been getting contacted by a lot of new clients, uh, a lot of new potential clients, and they want to make 2024 a better year for them, both physique, health, and fitness wise than 2023 was for them, which I applaud them for, because that is a great goal to have. And a lot of these individuals contact me and they complain about the fact that they haven't made any progress in years and haven't seen any noticeable change and improvements in their physique. But another aspect of that, that I frequently notice when I'm interacting and I'm engaging and I'm speaking with these type of individuals is they're stuck in their own way of doing things. And they hold so tightly to certain approaches and methods that they're comfortable with. And that even applies to wanting to start and wanting to wait until the new year to start a transformation process. So one thing I want everyone out there to think about, um, and anyone that has this you know, ideology or this, this goal of getting more out of 2024 is to think about if what you've been doing for years hasn't been working or hasn't been eliciting a better result for the past few years, why do you keep doing it? And this includes waiting until the new year to make a change. And you will never, none of us will ever be presented with the perfect time and or opportunity to transform your physique and your life. So if you're someone who's waiting for the new year to be, for that to be the time, you know, for you to make a change, I really encourage you to shift your mindset and start now as there's no better time than the present to get ahead on your goals for the new year. So if you are someone you're listening out there and you have, you know, an interest in just transforming your life, improving your nutrition, uh, changing your training, really making 2024 a better year, stop waiting, stop putting it off for January 1st or January 2nd, like really get in, like you could get a leg up on everyone else by starting now, starting five weeks out from the new year. And I think that's an ideology or, or a mindset that more people would prosper from and benefit from. From, rather than putting it off. Everyone always says, I'll start on Monday. The diet starts Monday or I'll start in the new year. And it's like, you keep putting off your goals and your dreams and you never get to them because the next event or the next um, obstacle in your life comes up that you might've not anticipated, but five weeks from now, you may have something come up where you can't actually go after your goals and you've been putting it off this whole time. So what are you going to do? Put it off for another three months for the spring. And then it's the summer and every single season you're going through life and you're realizing you're never getting closer to the things that you wanted to do. And you keep putting off the goals that you have and you never get there as a result. So really, if you're someone out there, you really want to transform your life. I'm someone that's really big into goal setting. And, and I set goals personally, um, professionally, physique wise every single year, but I do them months in advance. You know what I mean? Because I want to get jump up on the new year. And, and that's with everything in life. I like waking up earlier so I can get, you know, a, I'm a foot ahead of everyone else. And I know you're very much in the same manner. And I think that if other individuals within just in, in general, in our society could take on that mindset and really, you know, dive in and jump in, you know, with both feet in the, in the water, not tiptoeing into this shit, you, you know, earlier than they're ready to, they would really benefit from that. Yeah, I don't disagree with that at all. I think that, uh, you know, I see an uptick like right after Thanksgiving, right around the week of Thanksgiving. It's almost like people get really aware that the New Year is coming in. When people look at the New Year as seasonal almost like, oh, this is the time of year that I take care of myself and get in shape, you know, like the first of the year. And I'm always like, why well, wait till then? So it's a good point you bring up, man. Um, my last seven days are good. The family was good. Uh, holidays were great. Mm, unplugged a little bit. That was pretty nice. Managed to learn how to use an app. So that way when I do video stuff, I can add like picture on picture and captions. I, hey, I know good. at 43, I learned a new fucking trick. What can I say? <laughs> um, I was pretty proud about that. And then after interviewing 14 cover designers, I finally oh, landed on the one I like. So me and her, I paid her her money. She's begun drafting my book cover. So I should have it here in the next week or two to start going off of. I hope, I think it's going to be a good one right out of the gate. We vibed really well. She's from Australia. So hey, I got a dude, lot of clients out there. My dude, it's, it's funny how they think like, they're like, what is going on over there? It's like a mess over in America. I'm like, oh yeah, I try to just keep my head low and, and do my thing. And they're like, oh, it's probably best. <laughs> and I'm like, absolutely. I'm like, yeah, it is it's sad, but it's, you know, anyway, that's a whole other day, but landing on her, it was really, really nice to like have someone who understood what I was trying to do. And I didn't have to like fucking keep arguing with them about their artsy fartsy way. I'm like, look, I get it. It's probably a better way to do it, but this is kind of what I'm designing, what I'm thinking. And it, it speaks to me and it's, it's my book that's going to go on the show. Absolutely. And, and honestly, with the amount of time, energy, and attention that you put towards that book, you shouldn't settle. So I'm glad that although it took 14 fucking iterations of individuals going through, I'm glad that you stuck to your guns and you waited until it felt right. I think that that's something that this is a memoir of your life and something that you've put a lot of time, energy, effort into, as well as this is a manifestation of 40 plus years of your life. And so if you're going to put something out into the ego 
you know, you know, the ecosphere, or you're going to put it out into the public domain, you should make sure that you're proud of it and you get the exact cover that you want. So if, uh, you know, someone's not on board with it, Hey, you don't have to hire them. Oh, that's exactly how I kind of looked at it. I was like, oh, fuck it. I'm going to find out for myself and go from there. You know what I mean? Um, so I was pretty happy with all that, but let us get into our episode today. So ladies and gentlemen, last week we went over activity trackers. So if you guys are interested in learning about that, especially with the new year where you might get gifted a whoop or an aura, it might be you know, a good episode to go listen to. But today we kind of piggyback off to a certain degree and we're going to go over episode 86, nutrition tracking, the benefits of tracking nutrition and how to get better at tracking. Funny enough, Brandon, I did not see this. Brandon could test. I did not see this until like five, seven minutes ago. I literally shot a movie, a video this morning where I talked about using a scale and how it shouldn't be such a paralyzing thing. It kind of like, how oh, after 28 years, I still can't intuitively eat. I need it as an anchor to give me like, oh, yeah. insurance. You know, Great so minds like my man. Yeah, exactly. And it, it helped me, what, what, what triggered this was having conversations with my gym lately. They're new members and they don't even know if they should track food, cooked, uncooked, grams, ounces. You know, like there's so much confusion out there. So this is a great episode we're going to get into. See, you guys didn't know this, but Brandon surprises me often. And I love it because I get to think fast on my feet. He knows it. All right, but let's get into this. Let's get into the introduction of nutrition tracking and how you want to set that up for everyone so they have the premise to go off of. Absolutely, my man. So when it comes to manipulating our nutritional intake and diet to improve our body composition, our health, and our fitness, we can only manage and adjust what gets measured. And as a coach, I personally like to have my clients measure and track their dietary intakes, especially when we first start working together, so that I can get a full scope of what's going on, especially from a nutritional perspective. And I want to see how a client is responding to the nutritional setup I've designed for them, so that I'm then able to determine what changes are needed to ensure a client continues to make progress and is moving closer towards the goals we're targeting, rather than just spinning the wheels as many have done in the past when they haven't been tracking or haven't followed a structured nutritional program. And so when I first have a new client come to me who wants me to take over their nutrition programming, one of the first things I make sure that they do is they start using a, a food tracking app like MyFitnessPal. And I'll tell you personally, I had a, a big preference towards chronometer and I just, I've had so much, and I've even done surveys with clients I have so many people that have pushed back on the interface on, on chronometer and they have such like people that have experienced tracking. They really like my fitness style. So a lot of times, you know, I'm going to kind of um, gauge this towards my fitness style because I've even changed how I'm tracking for my clients and I'm util utilizing my fitness style because I've just found it to be from a broad based perspective, especially internationally. That is the, the app that most of them are using. So it's not that you have to use my fitness pal. There is chronometer. There's um Macros Plus, there's a bunch of different, um, you know, food tracking apps, but really when it comes down to it, I want them to download one of these apps as it's an easy to use application and e extremely accessible method of tracking their diet, their daily dietary intake. And I personally believe that anyone interested in bettering their health and fitness should spend some amount of time, some period of time tracking their macros as it's one of the best ways to build awareness around food and the macros and micronutrient values each food source supplies us with. And so it's important to note that when we're tracking our da daily intakes, we're aiming for consistency, not for perfection. Because I do realize that a lot of people, they don't even go into the process of tracking. They don't even, uh, they're not even willing to take it on because they think they have to be perfect with it. But really, we have to realize that it's nearly impossible to be exactly spot on with every single item that we're eating on a daily basis due to the deviations in brands and also the fact that food labels are often inaccurate. Because if you know, actually, if you look at it, the FDA allows up to a 20% margin of error on prepackaged food items, which can skew our ability to get a perfect calorie amount from each item we eat, which is why I really you know, want others to really focus on, I, I do this with my own clients. I simply want you to think about being consistent with how you go about weighing your foods, using mostly whole foods in, in their diets, and also being sure to track every single calorie containing item you ingest, including the drinks, your supplements, like protein powders and intra-workout carb products that do have calories, you know, even fish oils, you know, your condiments, your creamers, your cooking oils, um, any thing that contains calories. And although these items may not seem like a big deal, taking in several servings of them per day does add up in terms of your calorie intake and will impact the results you get, you get or don't get, especially when it comes to a fat loss phase where a calorie deficit can easily be reduced or even erased if you don't track everything you're taking in. So from a fundamental perspective, we really want to think about tracking as um, an educational tool, but also an awareness tool, which I think that every single person that has the goal of improving their physique and you know, we have to 
consider the fact that if you're trying to improve your physique, you're going to have to improve your nutrition. No one's going to intuitively eat their way to a shredded physique or a lean muscular physique for the most part. And so this is going to be the foundational component. This is the basics, one of the basics that you really need to get down pat. And we're going to go through all of the benefits, the mistakes, the drawbacks, as well as some of the practical applications as to how nutrition tracking can help you and how you can make the most of it. Beautifully said. So what is the most common mistakes by those who don't track their nutrition. I like saying, I talked about this in my video. I've been doing, I've been eating healthy since I was 15. And I still, to this day, struggle with intuitively eating. And I'm I'm okay with admitting that after 28 years. I don't think there's anything mm -hmm. wrong with it. I think, and that's one of those things when you tell a obese person, oh, you can intuitively eat your way to weight loss. I'm like, oh, I don't know how the hell that works, but okay. You know what I mean? So I'm curious to see what your thoughts are on all that stuff and kind of go from there. Absolutely. So one of the main reasons why tracking your nutrition is so helpful and important is because how common it is for so many individuals to underestimate how many calories they're consuming on a daily basis, which can not only derail your ability to achieve the body composition progress you desire, but can frustrate you in the process and cause you to want to throw in the towel without even realizing that it's not that you're incapable of making change and actually attaining progress. It's just simple mistakes that you're making along the process. So there are two common mistakes I see many make, which hold them back from making the type of progress they both expect and desire. So the first mistake that many make is they underestimate how many calories they're eating on a daily basis. And that could be due to multiple uh, reasons and multiple components. So they're either, by, they're either not tracking at all or they're tracking, yet they're taking extra you know, licks, sips, bites, and tastes throughout the day that they don't remember to track for or account for. So in their minds, they're eating far fewer calories than they actually are. And the second mistake ties into last week's podcast episode regarding the use of activity trackers to estimate the amount of calories we burn per day. And we covered the data on how activity trackers can be between 27 to 93% off in terms of their energy estimation or energy expenditure estimations. But many are unaware of just how inaccurate these devices are for measuring the amount of calories they burn during exercise, as well as throughout the rest of the day. So this leads many individuals to overestimate how many calories they're burning per day, which can either result in them aiming for incorrect macro targets, or even worse, is eating back the extra calories their Apple Watch said that they burned during a session. And the high likelihood of underestimating the calories in and overestimating the calories outsides of the energy balance equation is something that's found time and time again in the scientific literature. And often this type of research finds that the reason why many struggle to lose weight is due to incorrectly estimating their energy needs and their energy intake. And so, for example, in a study by Lickman and colleagues, researchers looked at individuals who claimed to be diet resistant and who believed they didn't have the ability to lose weight despite trying to do so many times over. And at the start of the study, researchers had two theories as to why these individuals were quote unquote resistant to weight loss. So one theory was that they may have a low total daily energy expenditure or low metabolism essentially. And the other competing theory was that they were underreporting their calorie intake. And so in order to test these theories, researchers took a group of individuals who claimed to be diet resistant and reported that they were eating a low amount of calories for a prolonged period of time, yet were still unable to lose weight. And then what they did was they compared them against a control group who did not have a reported history of quote unquote diet resistance. And so those in the diet resistant group reported that they believed that their failed attempts at losing weight were due to diet resistance and due to either having genetic or metabolic issues, such as thyroid disorder and things of that sort, that were preventing them from their ability to lose weight. And so these individuals also estimated that they were eating less than 1,200 calories per day, which co you know coincidentally happens to be that magical number that we often hear people speak about not being able to lose weight on. However, this estimation was far off their actual calorie intake on a daily basis. So in this study, researchers took these quote-unquote diet-resistant individuals and measured their resting metabolic rate, the thermic effect of feeding after meals, and their total daily energy expenditure. And then they compared these components of their metabolism against those in the control group who did not have the supposed diet resistance. And when comparing the diet-resistant group against the control group, they found that the diet-resistant group's total daily energy expenditure was actually higher than the control group's total daily energy expenditure. It was 4% higher. And when testing the metabolic rate and thermic effect of feeding between the diet-resistant group and the control group, they found that there was no significant differences between the two. And in actuality, those in the diet group had a, a slightly higher metabolic rate and higher thermic effect of feeding measurement, so their lack of weight loss was not due to any metabolic issues, such as a damaged or a slow metabolism, uh, down-regulated thyroid production, none of those things. 
And so the researchers also tracked both their calorie intake and their calorie output using the gold standards of assessment, including indirect calorimetry and doubly labeled water for two weeks to get exact measurements of what they were eating and what they were burning as well. And so what they found would surprise most, but it's a common mistake that many dieters make without even realizing it, especially those who don't consistently track their nutrition. And when researchers compared these participants' actual daily calorie intakes compared to less than 1,200 calorie intake that they claimed to be eating at, they found that these participants underestimated their calorie intake by an average of 47 calories per day, which meant that they were eating close to 1,100 calories more each day than they actually thought. So although they thought they were eating a little over 1,000 calories per day, they were actually eating well over 2,000 calories per day. Then when it came to estimating the amount of calories they burned per day through exercise, they found that these participants overestimated the, the amount of calories they burned through exercise by 51%, which totaled another 250 plus calories per day. So in total, their total inaccuracy in the estimations were over 1,300 calories different. They were actually eating 1,300 calories more than they were claiming to. And this was the reason why they weren't seeing any weight loss, not because they had weight loss or diet resistant or a, met a, a damaged metabolism, like so many of them thought and told researchers at the start of the study. And it's important for us to acknowledge and realize that we're all susceptible to human error. We all make these mistakes, including fitness professionals. I work with fitness professionals that make these mistakes quite often. And so we have to realize that if you're in the general public, you haven't been doing this for you know two plus decades, like Jeff and myself, that you're susceptible to human error as well. So I'll admit my fault and, and Jeff has as well. Like we're all susceptible to this. And we're even at an increased likelihood of making these errors and these mistakes when we're in a dieting phase and experience heightened hunger, because this can throw off, you know, we might be snacking subconsciously or grabbing things, bite slicks and taste. And I've been thinking about them just mm -hmm. because we're so hungry and, and famished essentially. And this isn't to say that you guys are doing this intentionally or that you're a bad person for underestimating. However, it is something that many neglect to touch on and needs to be something you're cognizant of, which is why consistently tracking your nutrition is a beneficial intervention to utilize when trying to expedite and advance our body composition progress. Okay, so then why do you encourage your clients to spend a portion of the time tracking? I think it's like anything else. You got to learn what it is. People don't get taught this. Like I didn't get taught finances. And I made horrible mistakes when I first got into college. So I think that's a great yeah. example. Yeah, no, I, yeah, that's why I always bring it up to people. I'm like, well, I didn't know finance, did you? And they're often like, well, no. I'm like, all right, well, relax, you know? So I think, you know, that's a great analogy, like looking at um, your calorie intake as a budget, just like you would your finances in terms of your expenses and your income. But the other thing, I think money is a little, is something that people can understand a lot more in terms of when you make a mistake and you gamble in the stock market or you just gamble in life, like you really pay the cost of that. When you're making tracking errors, a lot of people, yes, they're not getting results, but oftentimes they're not even realizing that that's what's causing them to hit plateaus and not see progress. So it's almost like they're not learning from their mistakes, which is where the utility of tracking comes in. So Nutrition tracking is an effective tool, which I found helps my clients understand what's in the foods they're eating and helps them hit their goals in a much more efficient manner than they have in the past. And I often have new clients who during our initial consultation will tell me that they eat really healthy yet have never been able to lose as much fat as they've wanted and have never attained the lean physique they desire despite attempting many diets and many fat loss phases in the past. And I also encounter a lot of individuals who have been able to lose weight in the past, but have used such drastic methods and measures such as eliminating all carbs or following a shake diet that once the diet is done and they, they end up gaining back all the weight they lost and more, more because the methods they used to achieve weight loss were unsustainable and they didn't le learn anything in the process. So these methods like these shake diets and things like that, they didn't teach them about how to eat in a manner that would support and maintain the results long-term. So they learned nothing in the process, which is a really big uh, benefit of tracking because it is an educational experience. And so whenever I take on a new client, I have them provide me a food log of what they've been eating up until the time that we're working together. So I can see where they're at, what they're doing. And so I can see their dietary habits and eating behaviors. And many times when I look at their food logs, I see that they are in fact eating healthy foods. So they have things on their diet, like red meat, they have salmon and fatty sources of fish, tuna, things like that. They're doing heaps of olive oil and avocados and nuts. So they have quote unquote healthy foods. And these are all things that are great 
but they're great in moderation. And so mm-hmm. we have to realize, yes, these are labeled as healthy foods and I won't dis- dispute that. However, they're also very calorie dense food sources that add up quickly and can easily take you out of a deficit, especially if you're not tracking the amounts of these foods you're eating and paying attention to portion control, especially when it comes to like things like the oils and butters that you use either to cook with or on top of your salads or your spreads or things of that sort. And I find that many will say that even when they go out to restaurants, they try to choose healthier options like salads. However, they're not accounting for the fact that oftentimes the liberal liberal amounts of cream or oil-based dressings that they're using or that are on the salads that they're eating and ordering contain as many calories as a burger and fries. So for example, if you actually, you go to Applebee's and you get an oriental chicken salad, it actually has... 1600 calories and 103 grams of fat, which for many women would take up their total calories for the day. But due to the fact that they don't track, they don't even realize how calorie dense, you know, a quote unquote healthy meal, like a chicken salad is. And then they're frustrated as to why they feel like they're eating healthy, yet they're not losing weight and seeing the results they want. And this is where nutrition tracking can be extremely beneficial as this is a strategy that we can use to record an account for all the foods, beverages, and calorie containing items that we take in and consume on a daily basis. And this can help increase our awareness around the food choices we're making and whether the meals and foods we're eating on a daily basis are in line with both our calorie needs and our physique goals. And so if your goal is to transform your physique, whether that be by building muscle or losing a significant amount of body fat, and you aren't tracking your intake, yet you feel like you're not getting the results you want, I encourage you to try consistently tracking as nutrition tracking is the most efficient way to ensure your diet aligns with your goals. And here's the thing. Many will say that they don't have the time to track. I hear this all the time. You know, I don't have the time to track my macro and my calorie intake, but if you were really to add up the amount of time it takes per day to track, it's going to take you five to 10 minutes per day. And that's only in the beginning. As once you get more efficient and skilled at tracking, it becomes far more time efficient. And if you're someone who has spent months or even years spinning their wheels, trying to reach their physique goals, yet hasn't taken the time to get good at tracking, I'd argue that the time it takes you to track your intake is a very small investment that will yield much larger returns long-term in terms of your ability to get the results you're looking for so if you so you so that you don't continue to waste your time trying fad diets and quick fixes, which are not only expensive from a monetary perspective, but also from a time perspective. 100%. So then what are the benefits of tracking nutrition? I, you know, Earlier, I had said, you know, the intuitive eating and all that stuff. And I think that what happens is most people tend to eat, really. Uh, or they get stuck, like you just said, a perfect example, going out to eat, and then they get a salad, and the salad's like 2,200 calories or something they overeat. So uh, I think that when you're doing the benefits of tracking, it allows you to know what the damn middle is. And it allows you to at least give you a little bit of balance, maybe some peace is what I have usually found. People tend to be anxious about because it it's something new, but once people learn it, I've never, ever had anyone be like, Jeff, I fucking hate you for teaching me how to take care, track my nutrition properly and use an app. I've never, ever had that said to me. So uh, what are your thoughts on that, my man? Yeah. So I, personally, I think that there are a multitude of benefits that tracking provides us with that cannot be achieved if you're someone who isn't weighing and tracking your food, at least for a period of time. So tracking is a strategy that's useful regardless of what phase you're in. And we can use nutrition tracking to see if your diet or what your diet is composed of and what you're eating on a daily basis is compatible with your goals. So for example, if your goal is fat loss, you need to be in a deficit. If your goal is maintaining fat loss post-diet, you need to be eating at maintenance. And if maximizing muscle gain is your goal, you need to eat high protein and be in a slight surplus. However, most of us cannot, like Jeff has been hitting onto, we cannot just intuitively maintain these different states of energy balance without having some type of accounting tool to do so, which is where tracking comes in handy as it takes the guesswork out of whether your calorie intake is in line with your physique specific goal. However, once you're tracking, we can use the data you're collecting to make more calculated adjustments to your current nutritional approach. So for example, if fat loss is your primary goal and what you're, you're currently eating is having you either gain or maintain your weight, we can then make adjustments to get you into an effective deficit so you can start to drop body fat and get closer to the lean body composition that you desire. Tracking is a great education uh, you know, educational tool for learning what's in foods we eat and increasing your knowledge around food and your overall nutritional IQ. And I'll tell you that tracking my nutrition starting more than a decade ago. So I started in the early 2010s tracking my nutrition, and it was one of the most beneficial educational experience 
is I utilize because I had to learn what was in food and it helped me make more informed decisions. And I've seen it do the same for hundreds and hundreds of clients that I've had track throughout our time working together. And this is because tracking teaches us about the calories, the macros and the micros different foods provide and allows us to discover what foods are higher and lower in calories or higher and lower in different mic macronutrients and what food choices are more and less satiating for our given calorie budget, as well as what foods are more or less conducive for our goals so that we can make better decisions that allow us to better adhere to the diet needed to achieve our physique goals. And it can help us, you know, improve your awareness around what you're consuming and your habits and behaviors around food, which we can then work on as a team, like as a coach and client, we can work on together to improve upon. And tracking can help you be more accurate and in line with the nutritional targets that will help you get to your goals. So most of the clients I work with will tell me that they didn't even realize how off they were in terms of their intake needed to get them to their goals until I had them start consistently tracking their nutrition. And then they could look at the data and realize what they were actually doing previous to us working together and what they needed, to, what changes they need to make going forward. And this is especially common during a fat loss phase, as often dieters don't realize that the foods and meals they're eating contain far more calories than they estimated. So it slows down or halts their progress. I also find that many need to track at least their protein intake as the vast majority of individuals will not hit an adequate protein intake unless they track it. And this in and of itself can cause them to experience heightened levels of hunger and not be able to either build or maintain muscle as efficiently due to the fact that protein is the most important macronutrient when it comes to muscle growth, lean mass maintenance, and hunger management. And I even know like experienced coaches who say that they will under eat protein unless they track it. So by tracking our intakes, it provides you with confirmation that you're on track with your targets and take some of the guesswork out of it. And food tracking is beneficial as an accountability tool as what we measure gets monitored and what gets measured can be managed, manipulated, and improved upon. So having my clients track allows me to be more able to accurately gauge their response to the nutrition program and then make proper adjustments to their diet to ensure that we're able to continue making body composition progress. So overall, if we look at the benefits of tracking, it's multifaceted. So we look at different benefits such as the fact that it provides us with objective and quantitative data on what we're eating. It teaches us about the calories, the macros and micros different foods provide. It allows us to discover what foods are higher or lower in calories and what macros they provide, as well as what food sources provide more bang for our buck in terms of satiety and fullness per calorie. It helps us determine what foods are more or less conducive or appropriate for our goals, given the calorie budget that we need to maintain. It increases awareness around our dietary habits and helps us monitor both our eating habits and our eating behaviors. It can help us employ strategies to improve our outcomes and our results. It helps lead us to making more informed diet decisions than when we weren't tracking. It allows us to make more objective changes going forward. It helps us to manage our calorie budget just like we would a financial budget. It provides us with targets to shoot for. And then from a coaching perspective, this provides us with more objective data on what our clients are eating so that then we can make more appropriate adjustments to their nutrition plan to help them reach their goals in a more efficient manner. Okay, so I know you. What does the research say on tracking? You know, I'm on it. So um, oh, no, it that's why I said it. You know, it, it's interesting to look at this because I don't think people realize that there is objective outcomes that literally just imp implementing tracking. I'm not saying tracking on its own is going to yield you know, these awestruck, you know, these amazing benefits. But when we combine tracking with other nutritional interventions, it increases the efficacy of those interventions. So in the literature, we see that self-monitoring is a highly predictive habit of both successful weight loss and weight loss maintenance. And two of the most successful forms of self-monitoring are nutrition tracking and body weight tracking. And when we look at research on nutrition tracking through mobile apps, we see that this approach can help with weight loss and body composition outcomes. So there's multiple lines of data that will really look at independently. If we add tracking into a dietary intervention, does it better the outcome. So for example, in a 2022 systematic review and meta-analysis, researchers looked at the effects of combining different interventions with the use of a smartphone app. So this is something kind of like a, a MyFitnessPal. And this analysis found that when compared with controls, the use of a smartphone app-based intervention showed a significant weight loss at both three and six months. And then in this subgroup analysis, based on the various intervention components that were added to the mobile app, the combination of a mobile app which tracked you know, nutrition and behavioral intervention showed an even more statistically significant a weight loss at three and six months. And then when a behavioral intervention was present, only the combination of a mobile app 
with intensive coaching or feedback from a human coach showed a, a statistically significant weight loss at three and six months. So the best approach is to use tracking with an app plus the assistance of a coach is really what the literature is leading to. And then a 2022 systematic review and meta-analysis found that using smartphone apps for tracking are effective in initiating and sustaining weight loss between three and 12 months. So we're seeing significant outcomes through the addition of taking an intervention like a dietary intervention where we're modifying the diet and then having an accountability tool such as a mobile tracking app to keep you on point with your actual targets and then combining it with the, the help of a nutrition professional such as a coach. So these are multifaceted, like we spoke about about 10 episodes uh, back, we spoke about like the most effective deficit for fat loss. And we spoke about different modalities, combining nutrition with training, with cardio, and how that elicits better results long-term, not only in terms of fat loss outcomes, but total body composition. So you're able to lose more body fat and maintain more muscle and yield a better result all in all. And that's kind of what we're seeing with tracking. Tracking by itself, it's not going to lead to significant outcomes. If that's all you do, if all you do is track the exact same shit you're eating today and you don't make any modifications, it's not going to do anything. You know what I mean? However, if you utilize it with an intervention like cleaning up your diet or, you know, modifying your, your approach to nutrition. And then on top of it, you utilize, you know, the help of a coach to guide you through the process. There's going to be so many advantages to doing so. Okay, so then you talked about this earlier. You used Chronometer, and that's a great app. I know a lot of people use My Fitness Pal. I know the app I use for my clients um, tracks nutrition too. But how do you recommend that people track your calories back? We got Food Scale, we got Food Tracking app. Is there anything else people need to be, have be equipped with out there that they might want to look into that you recommend as best practices? Absolutely. So, um, you know, we'll go through it all in all because there's there's multiple components to track. And I know that a lot of people, they get confused on like the steps or even what to do. So we'll do uh, se essentially like a how-to guide on how to track. And so nutrition tracking is a simple process once you get it down pat and can be done by using a tracking app like MyFitnessPal or Chronometer. But it's also something that you can do through a food journal or a food diary. So I do have certain clients that they just, they're kind of like uh, IT guys and they like doing it through Excel. And that's, that's more than okay. If, you know, you have to find a method that is... Uh, beneficial to you and something that you vibe with. And honestly, I started with actually originally checking in a food journal. So that's, you know, we didn't have these apps. I know Jeff, you're very familiar with it. Like we had calorie counting diaries. And so yeah. there weren't any of these apps, but anyway, you know, if you want to make it the most efficient a manner, I would say to get a nutrition app. One of the ones that are free are more than the ineffective. And so nutrition uh, tracking consists of three main components. You need to look at the nutrition facts of the food you're planning on eating, which can either be found on the label itself or in a tracking app. You need to weigh and measure your food portions on a food scale. And last, you need to track your meals and input them into your food tracker of choice before you consume them. So the first step I'd suggest doing is to look at the nutrition labels on the food you buy and plan to eat or plan to include within your diet. And there's a ton of information on the nutrition labels of foods, but the most important components you need to look at are the serving size of that food and what calories and macros that food provides. Next, you want to weigh out the servings of all the food sources that are going to make up the meals utilizing a food scale. So in order, you know, just uh, give you guys a little background. I know, Jeff, you just covered a video, so maybe we can link it to uh, the podcast show notes in terms of how to utilize a food scale. But in terms of how to use, use a food scale, all you want to do is set your bowl or your plate or your Tupperware container onto the food scale. You want to set the food scale to zero, or you could use a TAR feature. You place your food source on the scale to weight once it's been zeroed out and record this weight measurement in my fitness power, whatever calorie tracking app you prefer. Now, when it comes to weighing your foods, make sure that you use the same method consistently. I see this a lot of times where people go wrong. So for example, don't go from weighing your chicken cooked every meal to weighing it raw and going vice versa or, or across the week. Just find a method that suits you best and continue with that consistently. And then another question I often get asked is what to do if your food doesn't come with a nutrition label? And this is something you'll commonly see, especially if you go, if you get like frozen or packaged produce, it'll often have a food label. But if you decide to grab fresh fruit or fresh produce, it won't. And this is also applicable if you get your meats locally sourced from a butcher. And so this is where you can look up the nutrition facts on a food database like the USDA database, which is actually my preferred method of, of looking up foods that I don't have nutrition labels for. And their site has something called the Food Data Central where you can look up different food sources and their nutritional content, and it's a regulated system, so it's highly accurate. And then last, you want to track your dietary intake through an app like MyFitnessPal or Chronometer. And the most efficient way to track is to track your meals ahead of time and prior to sitting down to eat your meal, rather than waiting until the end of the day and attempting to remember every single food item that you ate. And if you're going to track, 
do it right, honestly. And don't rely on your memory to track later and because you're going to be more than likely to forget a lot of items or, or various items throughout the day. So I personally suggest planning your food, your, your day out in advance. So your day of eating out in advance and then having everything weighed and measured and separated so that it's easy to just grab and grow. You have it tracked and you have everything essentially prepared for you and rely on last minute adjustments, playing macro textures. so that they don't have to worry about figuring things out on the fly. And then when it's it comes down to um, food entries, um, one thing, you know, one thing I've seen trip up clients is knowing what food entry to select when using an app like MyFitnessPal or honestly, any of these apps. And so since most of the food entries that you actually get on a free app, they're actually user generated, there can be multiple entries for the same food source. So to avoid selecting the wrong one that may be off in terms of its macro and uh, calorie content, you want to look for a green tick, which signifies it's an approved entry. So this is one thing, this is just like a, a little like heads up. Like if you guys see that something isn't, doesn't have a green tick, you might want to look it up or you can even do a cross reference. This is what I do personally. If I see that a food item doesn't have a green tick and I can't find an option, say a chicken breast, I can't find an option. What I'll do is I'll cross reference with the USDA food data, uh, food central database. And I'll look at the a nutrition fact or the the option that is most comparable to what the USDA says it is. And so that then I'm able to utilize that. I'll save that as an entry. And oftentimes, like why tracking becomes so much more efficient is if you eat very similar meals on a daily basis, you just cut and paste. It's the same things every single day. And so it really makes it easy. And then the last thing is we want to track every single calorie contained item that we eat to ensure it's all accounted for. So you shouldn't just track your main protein, carb, and fat sources at meals, but literally anything that contains calories, including your condiments, your snacks, your sauces, your calorie containing drinks and beverages, even creams and milks that you utilize in coffee and don't even think about, but they have calories in them, your butters and oils, your cooking sprays, and then any bite six licks and tastes that you have. And now when it comes to tracking, it isn't about being perfect or hundred percent accurate, but it's more so about being consistent and precise. So although we may not be able to be hundred percent accurate with our calorie intake or tracking due to the discrepancies on labels, we can be precise. Meaning if we use the same food sources consistently and we track them in the same manner over time, we can develop a high degree of precision to which we can then make the appropriate and proper adjustments to get the results we're looking for. So just because you can't track things accurately to the exact calorie doesn't mean that tracking isn't useful. And just like you wouldn't stop budging for necessities like food and gas, just because you can't foresee the changes in these items over time in terms of the cost, tracking is still an effective method to get our, to our goals in a more efficient manner. And also I highly suggest that you track with what's called flexible cognitive restraint. So don't look at tracking in this dichotomous way where you either nail it or you don't do it at all as this process isn't an exam which you either pass or fail. And it isn't about hitting a bullseye or, or if you don't, it's a bust. And when I have you know clients track, I do realize that they won't always be able to nail every macro on their plan to the exact gram. So I actually utilize a flexible tracking method that I learned from Eric Helms. And in this three-tier system, we have a best, a better, and a good bracket or good option. The best tracking bracket would be being plus or minus five grams of all macros. So all of your macro targets, you're within five. Hey, your sound just went out. Hold on one second, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to address this technical difficulty. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. We do not know what happened. It appears that the internet forces conspired against us for a spec. So, Brandon, go ahead. It was you were saying plus or you were going over the uh, your flexible method that you're talking about with the three points. Yeah. So we'll go back a little bit. So I was just speaking about the fact that I like to have clients track with a with flexible cognitive restraint, essentially. And I do realize that not everyone is going to be able to. Uh, track in an exact manner, meaning that they can hit every single macro on the head. And so what I have clients do is I like to have them use a flexible tracking method. And this is something that I actually specifically learned from Eric Helms. And so he has a system, it's a three-tier system, which has a best, a better, and a good bracket. So on the top of the bracket, like the one that I would advise most people aim for is the best. So if you want to have the best tracking method, it would be the best tracking bracket. And that would be within plus or minus five grams of all your macronutrient targets. The next bracket would be the best bracket. And that would be plus or minus five to 10 grams of all your macronutrient targets. And then the good bracket would be plus or minus 100 to 150 calories in total away from the actual targets that you have. 
Another way to approach this is to ensure you're within 5% of each macronutrient target. So say your diet consists of 200 grams of protein, 300 grams of carbohydrates, and 60 grams of fat. If we were to utilize that 5% discrepancy or that 5% variation, we would want to be you know, within 10 grams of that protein target because it was a 200 gram target. So 5% of that would be 10 grams. You want to be within 15 grams of that carb target and then within three grams of the fat target. Okay, so then is there anything else you'd like to say to wrap it up? Yeah, you know what? Uh, just one last thing before uh, we end this episode and hope that we we get the, the entire audio through. Um, you know, another <laughs> thing that I would like to give just for practical sake and just for applicability would just to be to give an example of how to track a food item. So, you know, I'll do a commonly utilized protein item. So one thing I'll tell you, I know this because this is something I eat on almost a daily basis. Um, something I eat as a protein source quite often is Oikos Pro Plain Yogurt, which is their high protein yogurt. And so one serving size of this yogurt is 170 grams, meaning on the scale, that's what we would weigh out. And one serving of that, that 170 gram serving util, uh, provides 160 calories, 25 grams of protein. So it's protein packed, 3.5 grams of fat and six grams of carbs. So I personally aim for 50 grams of protein in each of one of my meals. So one of my meals looks like two servings of Oikos with some mixed berries added in. And this is something that I have almost on a daily basis. It's almost like a dessert. I put some stevia in there or I put some, you know, uh, you know Splenda packets, whatever it may be. And I sweeten it up, but uh, it's phenomenal. But when I'm calculating that meal within my tracking, what I do is I add in two servings of the Oikos because I want to hit 50 grams. So I need two servings of that. So that's going to provide me 50 grams of protein, seven grams of fat, 12 grams of carbs, and 320 calories total. But say that you needed 35 grams of protein in that meal and you were utilizing the same protein or the same yogurt source. What you would do is you would take the 35 gram serving and you would divide it by 25 grams because it provides... Um, 25 grams of protein per serving, which would equal 1.4 servings of the yogurt. So then you take the nutrition facts that were utilized for one serving and you'd multiply it by 1.4 times. And so you'd also take the serving size of 170 grams per serving and you'd multiply that by 1.4, which equals 238 grams, which is what you'd weigh out on your food scale. So in this case, 1.4 servings of the Oikos would provide you, if you need, a, you need to get 35 grams of protein, in a meal, and you want to utilize the same protein source that I use, but keep in mind, my protein requirements are higher, you would actually have the serving that would be 1.4 times that. So it would be a 238 gram serving on the scale. And that would provide you with 224 calories, 35 grams of protein, 4.9 grams of fat and 8.4 grams of carbs. So we just see how we can manipulate things and how simple it can really be. Like these are things that you guys can get down pat in terms of tracking your nutrition. And oftentimes what ends up happening is I had spoke about earlier, now, this might at first take you five to 10 minutes and don't get frustrated with it. That's why I like people doing it in advance. So it's not like you're having to take time out of your day and stop things either right before the meal or after a meal, when you're trying to get back to work or, or, or back to the office, whatever it may be, do it in advance, take those five and 10 minutes. But what you'll notice is that you'll start finding, you know, um, approved food items. You'll start finding meal pairings that you really like for meal one or breakfast that you like pre and post workout. And then it will already be in your fitness, uh, your my fitness pal or your chronometer. And you'll just swipe up and, and just reselect those same items. You'll search them real quick. It'll be the same food item. It'll generally be the same serving because most of you guys are going to have the same protein um, intake on a daily basis across meals. And so then the, like I'll tell you personally, it takes me about two minutes to track my nutrition. And I eat a lot of the same meals on a daily basis. So I don't even, if I'm going to eat the same meals today, as I did yesterday, I'm not even tracking that again, because I know it's exactly the same. The only time I'm going to track it is I'm going to cut and paste from yesterday. If I'm going to add something to the diet, or I've taken extra sips, licks, bites, or tastes, just so I can account for it on my end. And so tracking overall is not only a great educational tool, but it's something that really helps to keep you in line with the targets needed to get to your goals. And that's why I thought this was a really a uh, beneficial topic to cover because this is something that Jeff and I speak with many clients about. And this is something that if you are working either with us or you're someone that is just looking to improve upon your nutritional habits, your approach to nutrition and your ability to dial things in, tracking is something that will greatly benefit you. I 100% agree. I've always stood in that basics. And I think a lot of people try to jump down the path of, I've always said it, hormones and everything else. And they don't even track their nutrition correctly or know what's going on. Yeah, people want to get deep into lab work and Dutch testing, but they've never tracked their nutrition on a tracking app. It's, it's I, it, what it would have really, you know, it's I've gotten some really good insights. I've just chatted with people at gym. I'm always just, you know, random people. And it's just that they don't want to admit 
work on something difficult is what they all say. And I'm glad we put together in a podcast episode talking about the utility of actually tracking your food and why a little effort goes a long way. 100%. Um, a lot easier to take a shot and everything else and call it a day than it is actually sit down and, and do it. But B, where can everybody find you at? All right, guys, you guys can find me as always on Instagram, which is at Brandon DeCruz underscore. Then for any coaching inquiries, questions, uh, consultations, please reach out to me on my email, which is bdecruzfitness at gmail.com. Just a reminder to you guys, please make sure to follow the show, whether that be on Spotify or iTunes, leave us a review and please, you know, share a screenshot of the, of this episode or any episode of the show onto your story, tag us and really let this uh, no cost education be spread to more people. Cause we're really trying to make a positive impact. If this is something, if you're someone that has struggled with nutrition tracking, or even if you're someone that you're trying to help someone else with their nutrition tracking, and it's just, there's been a barrier in terms of their ability to adopt these practices and really implement them into their daily lifestyle, whether you're a coach, you're a trainer yourself. We have a lot of coaches and trainers that, that work with clients that watch the show or that listen to the show, share with your clients. Like it's an easy resource where you know that there's, there's evidence behind it, but there's also a lot of in the trenches experience coming from both Jeff and I, where we've worked with thousands of clients to help them implement these habits, modify their behaviors and get results. And that's really what it all comes down to. But Jeff, tell them where they can find you and uh, we'll be uh, closing out for the day. Dude, that was really well said. I always like to remind coaches, you know, you guys talk to a lot of people, share the show. We're not trying to take anyone's clients or anything like that. We just generally like doing this stuff because it helps keep us sharp. And we like just helping a lot of people and just sharing shit we know. So um, share it. Yeah. There's more than enough to go around for everybody, I always say. So Absolutely. Um, you can find me, Jeff at relentlessforever.com. Oh, I'm so old. I guess I said .com. Anyway, um, and I'm on YouTube, Relentless Forever book hopefully coming out soon and then after that i'm gonna do a world round speaking gig all throughout the world and never ever fucking be on the internet again it's gonna be great but anyway i hope you guys had yourself a good week hope you guys enjoyed tuning in with us b my man i will see you later stay strong this week keep kicking ass peace